and welcome to another midday live recipe with me chef day hello how are you if you have come into the group um if you've come into the live sorry um please just say hello um when we do these recipes together i can get questions from you guys but i need to get them on my computer so if you would excuse me for one minute i will see if i can get the live up here and then i can read all of the questions you guys are going to fire at me because you guys are going to fire at me loads of questions today right loads of cooking questions i want from you guys about anything to do with cooking baking frying raw food whatever it is and throw it at me i'm particularly interested at the moment in questions about your back of the cupboard ingredients because i really really want you guys to start using those so let me just see if we can get them alive there we are okay right so if i click on that make sure i've muted it yep there we go okay so i can read your questions now yeah so as i was saying what i would really 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 like uh from you guys at the moment oh maria hello hello thank you for joining me is for you to go into your kitchen cupboards not necessarily right now but at some point um and look at those um ingredients that you bought once and you use them for like one recipe and then you never used it ever again. So it would be great if we can get you guys using those ingredients because at the moment, you know, obviously um, it's better for us to stay in. So we don't necessarily want to be going out to the supermarket to buy stuff when we've got stuff that we can actually make use of at home. Um, and also just to, you know, save a few pennies, which we're all mindful of at the moment of that too. So um, any random ingredients you've got, let me know what they are. Virginia. Oh, it's okay. Don't worry about missing yesterday's live. You watched it last night. Great tips. Yes, yesterday I talked about tofu. So tofu is one of those things that a lot of people get a bit scared of. They've had it once and it hasn't been very nice so they haven't tried it again, which is a real shame because it can be really nice. So you can catch up on uh, the live recipe that I did yesterday on tofu. Um, all of the lives are always saved so you can watch it back. You can watch it back while you're cooking as well. When you're actually cooking the recipe that I made, that would be amazing. If you do do that, please do share pictures um, and just let me know how you, how you found it as well. Uh, so we've got Pam, hi, from Durban, South Africa. Hello. Um, I did actually live in South Africa for three months on a monkey sanctuary foundation. <laughs> the perfect monkey foundation. Living with 500 monkeys, no less. Uh, Gloria, thank you for joining us. Uh, and Malcolm, uh, yes, yeah, lovely to have you all. So today we're going to be talking about emergency desserts. And why are emergency desserts so important to me? And why do I want to share it with you? Well... Okay, so I try to be as healthy as possible. So uh, that often involves not having things like biscuits in the house. Although the gentleman that I live with, we do actually have biscuits in the house, but mainly for him. I might indulge every now and again. Uh, but, you know, I do get to the point where like, I, I just want something sweet. Uh, you know, I've had, oh, Lara, thank you for joining me. Um, yeah, I just want something sweet, but I want it to be as healthy as possible. Um, and I just want to use what I've got around me, what I've got in my kitchen cupboards. Now, I know, I know, I know that I probably have better stocked kitchen cupboards than most people because this is my job and, you know, I run a cooking school. So I'm always experimenting and I'm always coming up with new recipes that I can teach our students and stuff like that. But hopefully some of these things you will have in your kitchen cupboards. And also I'll be talking to you about how you can change these things up depending on what you've got. So this is going to be very much like another blueprint recipe. And in fact, it's going to be lots of different blueprint recipes because there's loads of different ways that we can make emergency desserts. So let's start with something really, really, really basic. So first of all, we've got our raw uh, cacao here. You can also use cocoa powder if you haven't got raw cacao. The only difference is that this one hasn't been heat treated, so it has more nutrition in it. Oh, okay, I forgot to say, somewhere <laughs> in the picture today uh, is a rainbow. And so I invite you, 
particularly the children that are watching, I know that some of our viewers have kids with them and maybe they want to do something a bit different with them so sometimes they, they tune in and the kids watch me cook which is great, uh, which is why I'm also careful not to swear. Um, and so if any of the kids are watching today then please do shout out where the rainbow is. If nobody has shouted it out about halfway through then we'll get the adults involved. Okay, I think that that's fair. I think that's fair. So any adults who are about to say, Tsh, let the kids go first. Okay, back to our recipe. So yes, we have cacao here and cocoa powder. As I was saying, the only difference is that this one hasn't been heat treated, so it's healthier for you. But if you've got this one, then that's absolutely fine. Um, now, this is a really, really simple recipe. We've got the cacao, we've got some date syrup, um, and we've got some type of nut butter. You can use like pretty much any nut butter for this. It doesn't really matter. This is uh, a brand that I really, really love. Uh, they are called Natural World. Natural World. Do you see what they did there? Very clever. <laughs> uh, and, oh, hello, Natalia. Thank you for joining us. Um, yes, Natural World are made by um, this guy who is um, he's such an artisan when it comes to making nut and seed butter. So he has about 18 different products and he's actually come into the school to talk to our students as well. Um, and this is his pistachio, pistachio butter, which you can get on a cardo. You can also get their coconut cream and also their um, hazelnut and carob spread, which is absolutely phenomenal. It's really nice to support um, small businesses, small um, independent food businesses, especially at the moment. So we're gonna use some of his pistachio butter we can also use something like i've got a pumpkin seed butter here that i used you're such a jolly soul ah talisa under the kettle under under the kettle oh this kettle yes yes so we have a winner today <laughs> teddy has has yet again beaten everyone to it so this is our rainbow for today and underneath our rainbow we have stars that's what's at the, that is what is at the end of our rainbow. Uh, Virginia just said, uh, you're such a jolly soul. Your laughter is contagious. Good. I really hope my laughter is very contagious. Uh, and we're all going to smile a bit at the moment, right? So, my pumpkin seed uh, butter, I would admit, this is one of the, my back of the cupboard ingredients. Because I used it for like a raw tart, it's really, really lovely in a raw tart, uh, and then I never used it again. So I've got some of this that you can use. Now, with the pumpkin seed butter and also with the pistachio butter, they're a little bit on the bitter side, but that's okay because we're gonna be adding some sweetness to it anyway. And you can also, um, you can add, um, you know, almond butter or um, peanut butter, anything like that really, any of the nut butters. So a generous, helping of cacao. I do love my cacao. Um, into there. And a load of date syrup. Now, you will see that I'm not measuring any of this out because all of it is really down to what you like, you know? And so these are the type of recipes where you can try as you go and you can just change it. So I think that that was probably, what, one generous tablespoon of, of, cacao, of cacao powder, and then mixed in with, let's just say one tablespoon of this, and then one tablespoon of this, and then you can just adjust it as you wish. So the rest, yeah, so uh, I have deliberately put this into um, quite a, quite a tall thing given that the mixture only comes up to that and that's because when I mix this together it can get very well it can go everywhere basically so you don't want it to go all over the counter and all over your top okay so at this point you get quite a firm mixture really lovely it's really rich it's really rich and it is quite thick at the moment so let me just put this into a little a little bowl 
So this is great for a rich dessert that is very kind of mousse-like, fudge-like. This would actually make a really, really lovely um, kind of like buttercream um, to go on a cake. Really, really nice because it is quite rich. But I quite like these desserts where you only need like a little bit and that's it and then you're done. But what we could do with this, and actually I'll show you this now, is I wasn't planning on doing this, but I may as well kind of show you how my brain works when it comes to food. I think that that would be very, very helpful. Is what, you know, if, if I want to make it more into a uh, sauce that is going to go on something like a banana split, I often make a banana split of an evening. It's like the easiest thing in the world. Um, but actually my banana splits become banana butterflies because I can make them into butterflies on the plate. So, anyway, that's a little uh, adventure into my brain. <laughs> so, I'm just going to mix this in and again, like it's really, really good that we've got this high-sided um, jug that we're using. Robert, Ovi, did I say your name right? Please let me know. Uh, Robbie and Rebecca, thank you for joining me. So as I was saying, like, you know, it does get a bit messy. So it's great that we've got something high-sided. Sue, thank you for joining me. So this then becomes a bit more, yeah, and it loosens. And also what that is gonna mean, because we've added the soy milk there, is that it's gonna make it a little less rich because it is, it is quite rich. So the things that are making it rich is the cacao um, or the cocoa, you know, that's a very kind of rich, bitter taste, but also the date syrup. So date syrup is, is very rich. So we've got two really quite rich things together. Let me just put this over to one side. Um, so that is just like a really, really, really basic. Sorry, I can't remember. A really, really basic. Um, pudding and you know and that was just take minutes to make literally minutes, minutes to make so if your dessert emergency is very urgent then this is a great one if you want to break up that richness then you can do something like add um, nuts or add sultanas as well if you add sultanas then that will just break up that richness so that's one thing um, and just to say with that, you can add, you know, the nut butters or the pumpkin seed butter, you know, seed butters, anything like that. Um, but you can also use ground nuts um, because I know quite often uh, we end up having something like ground almond in the back of our cupboard. And, you know, we've used it for a cake or biscuits or something like that. Um, can you see the butterfly? Tell you, uh, tell you to ask, can you see the butterfly? Okay, right, one issue that we have at the moment is that we don't have any bananas apart from the ones in the freezer, which I'm gonna show you in a minute. So when I manage to source fresh bananas, cause you know, these things are a little bit tricky at the moment, then I will show you my banana, but my banana butterfly, I promise, I promise, I promise. Michelle, thank you for joining me. Thank you and hello. Okay, so that is one emergency dessert. So just to recap, that was the cacao or cocoa date syrup, which is gonna make it taste quite rich. If you don't want it as rich, then use something like agave or any kind of like light fruit syrup. And then we added to that um, some seed butter some, or some nut butter. So that's that one and I'm getting messy already. So you, you're not allowed to do this in a professional kitchen, but on a live recipe I'm allowed to, so. Yum, okay. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna make is some nice cream. So many of you will have heard about nice cream. Um, basically, it's frozen banana. And I just wanna show you like, how easy this is and just how you can make it a bit more interesting. Um, when I was a kid, we used to go to a place picnicking and there was a nice, you know, one of those like old fashioned ice cream shops. Um, and my favorite flavor there was banana. And it, it was the only place you could get banana ice cream. It was absolutely amazing. So I'm absolutely in my element that we've got ice cream. Um, so thank you, Daryl says, thank you for doing this. We love desserts. So do I, so do I. And Katia, hello, hello. Right, let's get our bananas. Okay, so these are 
my frozen bananas. Um, literally, I've just chopped them up. I've tried to lay them as flat as possible, and then I've put them in the freezer. Because if you put them in a bag, and you put them like this, then they're going to be really hard to pull apart, really hard, because they can get quite rock solid. Now, when you're using bananas from this, for this, even if they're a bit brown on the outside, you know, they get a bit speckly, a bit freckly, um, they, they'll taste fine. They'll taste absolutely fine. You know, when you eat them in their natural raw state, Pascal, hello. Um, when you eat them in their natural raw state, when they're a little bit freckly, they can uh, taste a bit, how can I say, or it's more the texture. They're a bit fluffy, you know, they're not as nice as, as they were. But when they're like this, they're, they're perfect. You can't, you can't tell any difference. So. We'll just take a few of these and we'll pop them into our blender. So this is going to get noisy in a moment, just to just to warn you. So we can just put some of these in here. And the trick with nice cream is to um, add as little liquid as possible. Because as soon as you start adding liquid, it's going to start melting. And the thing that's kind of like holding it all together and making it um, kind of thick, like ice cream, is the fact that it's frozen. So we don't want it to melt. Another one in, just for good measure. Okay, so uh, I'm going to add to this because I don't want it just to be plain nice cream so we've got some cinnamon here and we've got some ginger this is a great excuse to get some really powerful spices into your diet so these are great at being like anti-inflammatories and um you know but boosting your immune system which we could all do with at the moment so sneaking them in in recipes like this is always a great thing okay so with this i'm going to use a little bit of molasses <laughs> okay. Oh Jesus! Okay, I was going to use molasses. Give me a second. I'm going to run it under a hot tap and see if that helps. Oh Jesus! See, I haven't been working out recently. That probably doesn't help. Okay, I don't think this is going to happen. Do you think this is going to happen? Can I try a bit longer? You know, it's like one of those annoying things where you're like, I really, really need to be able to do this. Hey! Yay! <laughs> Wait, what's for that? Okay, right. So, some molasses in here. Um, and the reason why I want molasses in here is because this is going to be ginger cake ice cream. Oh, lovely. And that's the thing that makes uh, ginger cake taste so nice, is the molasses. And in fact, I'm going to put a little bit more ginger in there. What were the spices? So, the spices are ginger and cinnamon. So, but I'm going heavy on the ginger because I want it to be more like a ginger cake. Um, so, and Princess is yummy. I love your name. Uh, Annette, hello. Uh, and Bob, what was the Yeah, I've just answered that. Natalia, tap the cap on the countertop. It was, it was, it wasn't that it was um hard to come off. It's that it's sticky, and you know when it gets all like sticky. Yeah. So my method for that, and I have the same issue with um my pot of vanilla, um is to run it under a hot tap. So, or just to get stronger. Okay, Vanessa, thank you for joining us. And Juliet, thank you for replying. That really, really does help me because on the screen here, I can only see four comments. So, you know, sometimes I miss sometimes I miss questions that people have asked. So it's great if you guys can help each other out. Okay, so now I'm going to blend this. How do you spell the last ingredient? Molasses. I don't know if you can see that. There you go. M-O-L-A-S-S-E-S. Okay, so now I'm going to blend it. I'm going to really try and push it down. So I'm going to be doing this quite a lot. You can't just expect to put the blender in and for it to do all the work. It's not going to happen. We need to help the blender do the work. Okay. Do you see what I mean? 
and do you see how it sounds like my blender is not happy? It is not happy, but I know that it will be fine. And I know that at the end of it, we'll get some nice cream. So just a word about blenders, hand blenders. I absolutely love hand blenders because you can control them much better than other blenders. You can use a small amount of ingredients with a hand blender, whereas with the gel blenders you can't. It's quite difficult to do that. Um, my hand blenders, I don't spend a huge amount of money on them. Um, and I've found that as long as you get one that is over 500 watts, then it lasts a really long time. If it's below 500 watts, what tends to happen is if you're using it for something like this where it will struggle, eventually the motor will burn out. I've had that happen to me multiple times, um, even to the point of like one sparking in my face, which is like, was fairly scary. So, um, how much molasses? Okay, again, once again, this is down to your own personal fla flavour. Sorry, sorry. Uh, your own personal taste. Um, so, you know, it depends on how sweet you like it. Um, but it was probably around a teaspoon, something like that, because molasses is quite strong. And the amount of banana I put in was probably about one banana. Yeah, about one medium sized banana. But what I'll do is after this is over, I'll go back through everything that I have made and I'll put in the rough amounts that I used. And I know that just, you know, from, from sight and, and doing this enough, but I do really, really, really encourage you to play around with this because that's the whole idea of all of these recipes is that they're really versatile and it's really up to you um, how much you want to put in there. Because, you know, for some of us, um, we we don't like things too sweet, and then other, other people like food a lot a lot sweeter. Um, it's a real subjective thing. So this is ready. This is looking really nice. So the um, the spices and also the molasses make it into this really lovely caramel colour. Can you see that? Really, really nice. Um, and I will get. A little, a little glass to put it in. So just to say as well, you know, talking about hand blenders, quite often they come with this jug and the jug is very, very slim and it's far too slim to let anything go round. And so this thing here is just a bit of Tupperware. That's all it is. It's just a cylindrical um, Tupperware that comes with a lid. It's one of these click, click lids. So I love these because it means that you know you can take stuff everywhere and you don't have to worry about liquid coming out of your, out of the sides and like into your bag or whatever. Um, yeah. So I always use use those. I've got another one, another one here. They're great for, for using with a hand blender. So that is our um, uh, nice cream. Uh, mm, that's really good really good and the molasses just gives it that um extra taste of you know being a ginger cake um so i've got some really lovely spices in there and they're really coming through mm. um it goes really well with the banana but it really counter counters the banana flavor because banana can be like quite an overwhelming flavor so let's put these to one side I'm gonna have a really good lunch today, I just realised. Wow, this is gonna be a good one. Okay, right, now let's on to um let's let's get on to the next one. So th those are like really really basic ones, uh the recipes that aren't gonna set or anything like that. But I've just got another ridiculously quick and easy one and a great one to have on the go as well. So where are our uh, cacao nibs. So we've got some cacao nibs here. Um, so I know that some of you guys, you know, you may have experimented with things like raw food and you may have some of these ingredients just in the back of your cupboard that you've never used before. Um, and a lot of these things, they don't go off for a really long time. So they'll still be okay for you to use. So we've got some cacao nibs here. Um, and where are our sultanas? We've got some sultanas here. There 
go. And we also need some nuts. Okay, so um, you can buy toasted and ground hazelnuts already pre-done for you, which are absolutely brilliant when you're in a bind. We're gonna do another recipe in a moment where I've actually made them fresh, but I mean, these are great in, you know, uh, in an emergency, basically. Um, so we're gonna pop some of those into here. And then, <laughs> this is the easiest thing in the world. And then, so just mix them all up. And then you get a bit in your hand. Make sure you've got some of each, like of the three bits. And then, and basically, it tastes like a chocolate fruit and nut bar. I swear to God, it really does. It really, really does. And it's all like completely healthy. It was a great snack for when you're on the go or if you just need a boost, you know like when you've been working at home all day, okay, a lot of us will be doing that, it was a great thing just to like give you a bit more energy. So, really simple, just some dried fruit, some nuts, some good cacao nibs, all in one go, beautiful. Okay, right, now we're going to leave the, um, the simple. I only should nuts, but not the first two. Mm. Cacao nibs, sultanas, and nuts. So we had toasted and ground hazelnuts there, which are a great thing just to have in your cupboard for, for when you want to make an emergency dessert. Now, uh, the next recipes, we're going to use a few ingredients that um, need a little bit more doing to them. So, in here, we've got some cashew nuts that I have soaked in hot water. I'm just gonna take the water out of that and pop them into, into here. There we go. We'll need this as well in a second. nuts as I said they've been soaking I soak them in boiling water so don't put them into a pan just take the boiling water out of the pan um, and soak them in, in a bowl or something like that make sure that they're well covered because they will swell up so we've got our cashew nuts in there and then we've got our other ingredients over here so I was thinking about making this today um, and I did come across a bit of a problem in the fact that we don't have any berries. Uh, usually we keep below in the freezer, um, but we, we've completely run out. Um, so I thought, what can we make that's kind of like fruity? Because I want to show you like the fruit version of this dessert. And then in a second, we'll go on to the chocolate version of the dessert. So um, I decided lemon. Lemon is a great... Um, way to impart a really, really lovely flavour, lovely fruity, fresh flavour into a dessert. Um, and it's something that quite often we just have lying around. Admittedly, these are mainly used for uh, gin and tonic in my house. But you know, this is also a good way to use them. So, we aren't just going to use the juice, we are also going to use the zest. So the zest has a huge amount of flavour in it. Um, and if you're making something where you don't want to um, add any liquid because you don't want the, say for example, you know, like with a dessert like this, if you don't want it to be any more runny, if you want to keep thickness, then just add the zest. Just add the zest and don't worry about adding any of the liquid and you'll still, you'll get so much flavour out of the zest. And again, a really good ingredient for us to be eating at the moment. You know, I always figure if you can get all of these good ingredients for you, um, but in food that you really like, that feels like a treat, then that's like such an amazing win. Because it doesn't really feel like you're eating food as medicine, like you're just enjoying it and you're just like really loving those flavors and you know, the different spices that we've got and the fruit and you know, all of that sort of stuff. And uh, you know, just as a byproduct of eating this food you're also getting healthier okay so we will add some of the liquid in here there we go 
And so with this one, I don't want to add a date syrup because the date syrup is going to make it darker I and mean, I would quite like it to be quite light um, and you know quite a summery spring dish so we can use um, an agave or we've got a fruit syrup here um, either of those will do so they don't have any color to them whatsoever and that's great when you're thinking about um, what you want the look of your dessert to be so so oh by the way in here is 100 grams of um, cashews and that is about three tablespoons of agave um, and then added to that we have our tofu so we did talk about this a bit yesterday in the show on tofu um, tofu is such an amazing ingredient it's really really versatile I use silk and tofu quite often in desserts um, I like the lightness that it has and also it doesn't have a flavour of its own which is great because it can just be like a blank, I call it a blank flavour but it means that it's um, just like a blank canvas for other flavours to, to, to you know, uh, impart their flavour. Okay, so we've got our lemon zest and juice in there, um, we've got our 100 grams of cashew nuts that have been soaked, we've got half a tub of this so this is 300 grams or 150 grams of silk and tofu we've got agave nectar now I'm gonna make this um, first I'm gonna whiz it up and then I'm gonna taste it and if I want to put any more of this in it then I can um, that's absolutely fine that's one of the beauties of a dessert like this um, and what we can do with this actually is we if we want it to be more of a setting dessert then we can add some coconut oil so I've got some coconut oil here this is refined coconut oil but you can use unrefined um, as well um, and the only difference will be is that the refined one doesn't have a coconut flavour the, uh, the unrefined one does um, and you've got to make that decision like you know is it a flavour that will go with this actually with lemon it will probably be quite nice um, but if it's you know some other flavour that coconut doesn't really go with then you can use the refined type okay so let's give this a whiz this is a noisy show it's a noisy, noisy, noisy show. Hello, Ingrid. Thank you for joining me. So Ingrid is one of my assistants, so she comes and helps out at the at the school. And so every Saturday we'll be teaching our students how to become professional vegan chefs. And Ingrid uh, is one of the ladies that helps me out. But obviously we're not together at the moment doing that. So I miss them all incredibly though. Um, yes. Anyway, onto some blending. Amuse yourself while I get noisy. Okay, so to see if I can show you guys this, it's still quite lumpy, and quite often when people start doing this type of blending with cashew nuts, they get to this point and they're like, oh, it's not going to blend, it's not going to blend, but you just have to be persistent with it. classes it's really really lovely all of our students come out of it being like I didn't think cooking could be like this stress-free <laughs> it's really really nice um, so um, I'm gonna keep blending this and as you'll see like I'm moving the blender around I'm not just like plonking it in and expecting it all to go around because it's quite a thick substance so it needs a bit of help <laughs> a lot 
lot, lot smoother. It's also getting a bit spattery. Um, so Pam asks, is there anything that we that can replace the tofu if we don't have it? Um, so yes. So basically, you just need something that's quite light um, because the cashew is going to be quite heavy. So we can either use something like uh, yogurt, and I use plain yogurt that doesn't have any added sugar to it. You could also add something like a vegan cream, um, so that would add that lightness. I mean, you can make this without the tofu and just as a cashew cream, uh, as a cashew mousse, that's fine. Just it will be a bit more on the heavy side. And some people like that and some people don't. But I think um, a lot of the vegan yogurts that are out there at the moment, like the cashew one as well by Nush, is really, really lovely and it can add that lightness as well. Um, and the coconut one, the coconut one will go really, really well with this too. Okay. So let's have a look at this. Mm. Give it a little taste. Oh, that's lovely. And it doesn't need any more sweetness. I was a bit worried because, you know, I've added lemon, which is quite sour. But that's lovely. Really, really nice. So added to this, I am going to add some of our coconut oil. So that's about one tablespoon there. And this would just help it to set. So if I want it to be one of these desserts that sets, you know, it only takes like an hour or so, if you can wait that long, but it's not a must. But you've got those like two different options there. Um, so if you do, you know, want to make it into more kind of like a cheesecake type thing, that when you're going to put your spoon through, it still stays like that, then you add the oil. In fact, I'm going to add another another bit. So that's about two tablespoons of coconut oil in that. And just make sure it's really mixed in very thoroughly because we have to remember that whenever we're adding oil to something like this, this is the glue that's going to help set it, it's going to help hold it all together. Mm. I'm going to add some more lemon juice to that. I'm a really big fan of sour and bitter. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea at all, but any food that's sour and bitter, I absolutely love. Um, lately, I've been able to get some bergamot. If you guys have ever used bergamot, it's absolutely divine. So, bergamot is basically what is um, in Earl Grey, so you might know it from that. Uh, and it's a form of citrus and it's so beautiful and really fragrant. So we'll just pop that into to there. And then, there we go. That's one dessert. I'm gonna pop that to one side. And now onto our next um, tofu and cashew dessert. So we've got another one of these here. Uh, let's wash this off. There we go. Um, and onto our other version. So we have some really yummy uh, toasted hazelnuts here. I absolutely adore hazelnuts and especially hazelnuts with cacao. So uh, once upon a time in Italy, um, in the Piedmont region, there was a shortage of cocoa. <gasps> Shock horror. I mean, that would just be dreadful. Um, and so a chocolatier came up with the idea of bulking it out with something. And the thing that they decided to bulk it out with was ground hazelnuts. Um, and that's when we discovered that the combination of ground hazelnuts and chocolate is so divine. Um, and when you get those in chocolates together, that's called a jandouille, and it is just heavenly. So you may also know it as Ferrero Rocher. Essentially, that is what Ferrero Rocher is. But we're going to use this as the base for um, our next dessert. So instead of using the, um, the cashews, we're going to use 
are toasted hazelnuts. So basically I just pop these in the oven at about 150 degrees until they start to turn black and you can smell them as well. You can smell when they're, when they're ready to come out. And then I'm just rubbing really loosely, rubbing those skins off. It doesn't need to be completely, completely off, that's fine. If there are little bits in there, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And just by toasting them in the oven, we've really accentuated the flavour in them. Not overboard. Um, we've really accentuated the flavour in them. So, and when I'm doing something like this, when I, when I want to uh, toast some, some nuts, I actually just do the whole packet um, and then I keep them in, in a box and you know it's something that I can dip into because these are really really versatile things um because yes you can use um ground hazelnuts in a dessert absolutely you can do that but you can also use it in so say for example making a ducker um which is ground hazelnuts and a load of spices that goes on top of hummus amazing um you can use them in salads as well you know like roughly roughly chopped hazelnuts and the salad is really, really nice. So just having those things available to you in your kitchen already um, means that you know when you actually when it actually comes to cooking, it doesn't take as long uh, as it usually would. And you also you can use those things for inspiration. You know, if you've got like bits and pieces all around the kitchen, then you can just like open up the cupboards and be like, okay, well, what can I put in it? And just try out like different combinations. Okay, so let's give this a whiz. chopper attachment to a hand blender um, and this is a brilliant 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 thing to use these uh, this this cost 24 quid I used to do a lot of classes just using um, these blenders they lasted a really really long time and lots of people were using them lots of people came to these classes so a good thing. So we've got our ground, our ground hazelnuts there and they already smell really really lovely. It's such a such a lovely smell. So now we can just pop this into our container and we'll basically do exactly the same thing as we did just now. Um, so we've got our tofu we can add the rest of the tofu in here. Again, just to add that lightness, because if it was the nuts on its own, it would be really, really dense. You know, if you guys have tried um, raw desserts, quite often raw desserts are so heavy that you, you know, you have a cheesecake and you have to have like the tiniest slice of it because you eat it, Ooh. you eat it and it's just really, really heavy. It fills you up very quickly. David. Morning, just tuning in. Thanks for making the rainbow easy for you. <laughs> no problem at all. I'm glad you saw it. Okay, so again, we're going to have to add some sweetness. So it depends what sweetness you want to add to it. Um, I think that a dessert like this can probably manage uh, some date syrup. That's going to be okay in it, but I don't want to detract from the hazelnut flavour because I love it so much. So I'm just going to opt for um, something sweet again. So we'll get our agave in there. Um, and of course, some cacao. You can tell how much I love cacao by the big bag that's here. generous helping of that now. So probably about two tablespoons there. And now we have to remember that with cacao, with cacao we are adding something that's quite bitter. So I might need to adjust the sweetness. But to my mind, like you know, if you have like a bitter chocolate dessert, Bruno, they 
thank you for joining me. Um, you guys are doing amazing work at Made in Hackney, by the way. If you guys don't know, they have been uh, feeding people who, uh, who are vulnerable in the community and they're doing an amazing job. Uh, Bruna, if you can, if you guys are still running um, the crowdfunder, if you can put the link to that in the comments, that would be amazing. Thank you. Uh, and Sabrina, thank you for joining me. Okay, so yeah, as I was saying, with cacao is quite bitter, but I quite like that. I like what I call an adult only dessert. It's not so sweet um, and it has other flavours going on. It has like different levels, you know, so that sweetness or a bit of saltiness is really, really lovely. Uh, and you know, if it's an adult only one, then kids aren't allowed to touch it. In theory. Um, okay, so we'll just give this a whiz. So this is the type of dessert that you could you can mix it up, you could add something like coffee in there, some coffee essence or some brandy, that would be lovely. Um, and some spices as well. Sorry, we, we had to ask this blender to blend all of the nuts, whereas we've already ground the nuts beforehand. That is quite bitter. Um, I'm going to leave it as it is because I'm going to actually mix things up and put something a bit sweet on the top. I'll show you what that is in a second. Now, you can have it as it is. Absolutely fine to do so. But I am going to add a little bit of cacao butter to this. So cacao butter, let me see if we've got it in here somewhere. Cacao butter is such a lovely ingredient. And again, it might be one of those things that you have in the back of your cupboard because you've tried like some random, you know, raw food recipe that uses cacao butter and then you never used it again. And it's one of these things that doesn't go off um, quickly, so it might still be okay. Um, they look like white chocolate buttons. Do not eat them like this because basically they're just oil. That's it. So be disgusting. But it's a great ingredient to put in here. It's going to make... Um, it's going to help the mousse to set, basically. So we'll just pour one, about two tablespoons of that in there. And give it another blend. <laughs> into our other glass and then I'm going to put a little topping on it as well because this is quite bitter but what you can do is if if this uh, the mousse is um, bitter or um, not as sweet as you would want it to be or it's a bit tart then you can use other elements to balance it out so I have done a, a mousse like this before and then I put frozen raspberries in the bottom which was really delicious and so the sweetness of them and the sourness of them really balance out the, the cacao. It was really 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 lovely. Diane, if we didn't have coconut butter could we sub coconut oil again for setting? So the deal is is that you can use coconut oil um, but if it is uh, unrefined coconut oil, it's going to taste quite coconutty. So you just have to like, you know, factor that in. Is that a flavour that you want in there? If you don't want that flavour in there, then you could just use refined coconut oil. So refined coconut oil is really, really useful. Um, so this is what we've got here. And I actually use this for making pastry, for making savoury pastry, because um, I don't think you really want to have your sausage rolls tasting of coconut. Although, I mean, okay, 
everything I say like that, I do think, well, actually, you know, we could give that a go and it might be quite nice. Um, but if you don't want your sausage rolls <laughs> to taste of coconut, then you use refined coconut oil rather than unrefined. Okay, so, oh, thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing that, Bruno. That's brilliant. Brilliant. Okay, so we've got our... I wasn't just doing that for effect. I am actually doing it just to like get it to settle a bit more. We've got our adults only dessert there. It's a little bit on the um, bitter side. So I'm gonna get some some lovely middle dates here and just break them up and pop them on top. And so, you know, I think it's quite nice if you have these different flavors going on. And if you know you take a mouthful of it, and you get a bit of bitterness and then you get a bit of sweetness that kind of like brings you back and you know that's like lovely when you have that journey um, when you're actually eating a dish rather than every mouthful just tasting the same okay so we've got some lovely sweet and we've got some lovely sweet dates on there. I'm going to use this that we used earlier. And just pop those lovely nuts on top. And the bits of cacao and a few, a few sultanas. And there we go. So that actually like makes it look a bit more like something you could serve at dinner party. Something a bit more posh, a bit more special. So... They're the two desserts that I wanted to show you using silken tofu and nuts. And just to quickly go through a couple of other options, I'm not gonna make them, but just to like put these ideas into your brain. Um, let me just check the comments. Oh, Diane says thank you, and Ed, thank you for joining me. Um, so here we have chia seeds. Um, I think a lot of you will probably have these in the back of your cupboard. Uh, because you know you heard about how amazing they are and how good they are for your health and then you know, maybe you didn't end up using them or you didn't end up using them as much as you as you wanted to as you thought you would um, or it might be that you use them once and they look like frog spawn and you didn't want to use them ever again which is a common thing that does happen so if that has happened to you one great way to mask these seeds is to use them with something like raspberry because when you mix them with frozen raspberry that is defrosted it's got that lovely juice in it these seeds actually take on the color of the raspberries and to our mind all we see is raspberry seeds that's it so you can make a really really lovely raspberry jam um, that you can have, you can just use it actually as a jam, or you can use it as an accompaniment for a dessert. Um, you know, that's lovely. Um, and it literally takes like 10 minutes. So basically you take some frozen raspberries, you let them defrost, get some of that lovely juice out, um, because that's the juice that the seeds will need to, to thicken. You just add some chia seeds and in within 10 minutes it will thicken um so but if you want to actually make um a chia pudding then really all you need to do is make a thick smoothie add these and let it set that is it it isn't any more complicated than that so whatever smoothie it is that you like you know you can make a cacao and banana one you can make a mango and pineapple one whatever it is literally you just make a thick smoothie um add your chia seeds and let it set so let it set for about like four hours a lot of people say overnight but because that's just an easy thing because then you have it for breakfast so that's a really easy one but obviously like there's a bit more of a time factor in that and then we have this beautiful thing that I made uh, just before we came on um, and so this is basically just yogurt and I added some syrup to it um, just to sweeten it but you can have it without it depends you know if, if you want it to be sour or if you want it to be sweet and then the colours that I added to it no I added some uh, this is beetroot powder um, but we've also got some raspberry powder here as well to make it lovely and pink. 
And then for the middle one, I added some turmeric. So this is a really good cheating way to get your kids to eat turmeric because, okay, fair enough, they might not like a turmeric latte. Um, some people don't, but if it's mixed in here and I did some lemon zest as well, so you really can't taste the turmeric, it's really lovely. And then this is an amazing ingredient that I've just started to use. It's from Spira. Um, and it's actually a form of spirulina, which is completely blue, so it gives this lovely blue colour, and there's no fishy taste, um, so it's very healthy for you as well. I know that that's like going to be a bit more difficult to get hold of, but if you're really into you know making colourful dishes like that, colourful desserts, then I really recommend getting Spira. I'll put a link to it in the comments. Um, so literally, this is just yoghurt. That is all it is, but you know, it looks lovely and pretty. Um, and just to go over a couple of things like with you guys, you know, there is a lot of different flavours that you can use with these desserts. So we've got things like rose water, use judiciously, okay, just a couple of drops. Be careful with this. Goes really, really well with raspberry, rose does. Uh, we've also got some rose petals, which is actually a tea. And these teas are great to use as decoration, but also as flavouring. So here we've got a nighttime tea with organic oat flour, lavender and lime flour. You could just tear that up and actually use it to scatter onto a dessert. Um, really, really lovely flavours in this. We've got a chamomile tea here as well. Chamomile is such a lovely flavour. Um, and really underrated, so you can use that in your desserts. And we've got lots of, you know, things like, you know, almond essence and orange blossom essence and this type of thing, you know, that you guys may well have in your cupboard from that birthday cake that you made last year. Um, so, you know, do dig them out and see how you can incorporate them into your emergency desserts. Okay, so, <sighs> and breathe. That is our lesson for today. Please do tune in tomorrow. Uh, let me know if there's any of those back of the cupboard ingredients that I can help with. Um, if I have got the ingredient myself, then I will make a recipe with it. If I haven't, then I can just advise you on how best to use it. So tomorrow we will be making, just one second. We'll be making something with this lovely bunch of rhubarb. So my mum suggested, so I asked for suggestions, and my mum suggested um, that I make a rhubarb crumble, but a spiced rhubarb crumble. So I'm going to do that, but I'm going to also make it an oaty one, because we've got some really lovely organic oats uh, that are from the UK um, in our cupboard, so I'm definitely going to put those to use. It's going to be gluten-free as well, because I'm gluten-free. It's going to be as easy as possible, just to make it as easy as possible for you guys to make it. So, uh, thank you. Uh, so Julia says she's going to pop her banana in the freezer. Yes, it's a very, very good thing to do, particularly if they're going freckly. Really good way of, of making sure that you don't waste them. So let me know if you've got any questions, any recipe ideas, any back of the cupboard ingredients. Um, I hope you're all doing well and have a lovely day.